morning and welcome to commencement celebration. Please be seated. My name is Dan Blumstein. I'm the chair of the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology. And on behalf of UCLA and the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, I'd like to welcome um, all of our guests, including all of the families who've come for this wonderful occasion and any alumni who are in attendance today. I'd like to now present you the graduating class of 2012. Way to go. I've had the pleasure and honor of being with this department for over a decade, and I can attest this is truly a great place to study ecology and evolutionary biology. Not only is UCLA driven to support excellence, our faculty are internationally recognized for their intellectual leadership, and importantly, they're a really nice group of people, um, which is really important. We have a wonderful and impressive postdoctoral um, uh, cohort of scholars, an incredibly strong cohort of graduate students, and look around you, some really wonderful undergraduates. We're, we're very proud to say that 13 of our graduating seniors have been elected to Phi Beta Kappa, the oldest and most prestigious honor society in the United States. And our students frequently win other prestigious awards and are admitted to graduate and professional programs of their choice around the world. It's an honor and a pleasure to be up here today celebrating their past successes and launching them on their careers that may take them from the halls of power to the leading operating theaters around the world. Our students leave UCLA with a strong understanding of the scientific method, and this will serve them well in the future as citizens and scientists, teachers and doctors, photographers and writers, parents and government officials. We wish you the best, and we ask that you stay in touch and we will celebrate your successes as ours. So I'd like to take a moment to introduce um, the members of the official party in attendance this morning are members of the faculty of the Department of Ecology and uh, Evolutionary Biology, including Professors Don Booth, Peggy Fung, Peter Nonax, Ken Nagy, Phil Rundle, Cliff Bronk, and David Jacobs. A um, number of these faculty have won UCLA Outstanding Teaching Awards. We take teaching seriously in the Department of Ecology and Evolutionary Biology, and we hope that um, all of you who are graduating this year have enjoyed your time with some of our wonderful faculty. We've enjoyed our time with you. We have. It's always a pleasure to introduce a distinguished alum from our program. Um, Sadika Stelsner certainly fits this description. Initially trained as a cellular biologist, Dr. Stelzner has published many scientific peer-reviewed articles in respected scientific journals. Upon completion of her undergraduate and graduate studies at UCLA, Dr. Stelzner was invited to Milan, Italy to perform scientific research on a grant from the Italian Science Council. She subsequently received her medical school education at Boston University. Dr. Stelzner was granted a research fellowship by the National Institutes of Health for the Harvard Medical School Brigham and Women's Hospital. After completion of her research fellowship, um, she accepted a residency training um, position in ophthalmology at the University of Washington in Seattle. She's also completed executive management training with the Yale School of Management. In addition to her medical practice, she's traveled with humanitarian organizations to perform surgeries where she literally gives sights to patients and where she teaches her safe and innovative surgical techniques to local physicians in Mexico and El Salvador. She's currently the director of eye care at the Greater Los Angeles Veterans Hospital, chief of ophthalmology at Santa Monica UCLA Medical Center and Orthopedic Hospital, and is an assistant clinical professor at the David Geffen School of Medicine in the Jules Stein Eye Institutes, where she attends the UCLA residence. She's also a physician in the Santa Monica Eye Medical Group. Dr. Stelzner has been recognized in Who's Who and in Consumers Reports as one of the best ophthalmologists. Her area of interest is in comprehensive eye care, including cataract, laser, and eyelid surgeries. She's a fellow of the American Academy of Ophthalmology, a fellow of the American College of Surgeons, a, a member of the American Society of Cataract and Refractive Surgery, the American Medical Association, the California Medical Association, and the American Society of Anti-Aging. She's a staff surgeon at St. John's Hospital in Santa Monica, Santa Monica Surgery Center, and Laser Eye Associates in Beverly Hills. She has also been the recipient of the Best Teaching Award from the Jules Stein Eye Institute and UCLA.
So it's with great pleasure that I introduce a distinguished alumna, Sadika Stelzner, to give our commencement speak. Thank you. I would like to thank Dean Sork, Chairman Blomstein, and distinguished faculty for inviting me today to speak. And uh, it's my great pleasure and honor to be a part of this very important ceremony and address to proud parents and the distinguished graduates of class of 2012. Happy Father's Day to all the fathers. Today you are receiving an awesome gift from your graduates for the Father's Day. 26 years ago, I sat in the audience next to my proud parents and full of excitement. After all, graduation is an important milestone in your lifetime. You will soon embark a new journey to your next journey. Some of you will commence graduate training and some other interest job market in this challenging economy. Today, you will also be receiving gifts from friends and relatives in recognition of your accomplishment. I would like to convey to you a few important lessons I learned from my remarkable father. I hope you will consider these lessons my gift to you the, today. My father was born in Uzbekistan in, in the 1930s. He lost his parents as a young child due to ethnic cleansing by the Soviets at very young age. Helped by relatives, he fled from Uzbekistan first to China, then to the India, where he spent his early childhood in a British orphanage. As a young man, later he moved to Afghanistan. In his early 20s, he was curious and self-reliant. He learned multiple languages, and he became self-taught scholar. Among many other topics, he studied the wisdom of the major world religions. He became a successful merchant, traveled widely in Europe and Asia, married a wonderful and kind Uzbek woman. I grew up in Afghanistan during peaceful times. It was a happy childhood. Then came the Communist Revolution of 1978. In my early teens, we were forced to leave Afghanistan and migrated to this great country. Once again, my father lost all his possessions. But he wasn't daunted and depressed or simply started anew in New York with his wife and six children. In this land of opportunity, he rebuilt his life and became a successful businessman. Reflecting his own experiences, my father tells us that material things are not the most important thing in our lives. They are not a measure of success. Material things, he told us, it's a dirt on your hand. It can easily can be washed away. But education, kindness, generosity, and good deeds are more than skin deep. They last forever. To me, my father was a voice of wisdom that has inspired me never to feel too down or overwhelmed by setbacks. At the same time, he also modeled for me qualities like drive and determination to face challenges with my head up. When I think of him, I encourage to find an alternative route to overcome obstacles and learn from my mistakes. 
I remember when I first arrived at UCLA in the 80s, long time ago, I was frightened and intimidated by huge size of this campus, but I was determined to learn and excel with my, fa my father's voice pounding in my head, I refused to hide in the background and instead push myself to seek for help from my helpful professors and mentors. In short, um, I, sorry, help, I learned to relax and let go of frustration by expecting less from others and more from myself. In short, I learned that we are the manager of our own lives. We deal with circumstances beyond our control, and we must accept the consequence of our own decisions. This is much easier if we always remember that whatever your professional goals are, your ultimate goal should be to be a good human being, just as my father taught me. With this in mind, I would like to share a few suggestions I have learned from my father's path and from my own experiences. Don't worry about making the wrong career choice. Who you are at 40 may be different than who you are right now. These days, it's not unusual to have three, four, even five careers in your lifetime. Pick a career that supports your natural talent and brings you joy. Do you thrive on innovation? Entrepreneurship maybe is a path for you. I studied cell biology and biochemistry, and I loved research, and I spent several years in a funded laboratories. But I also love to be close to people and run my own business. So I eventually I became a doctor, and now I run a large practice. I would never have predicted this when I graduated. Use your education, a door opener, to find the right path for you. With the education you receive at UCLA, you have no limits. Realize that you can have a family and a career. Even though working in a career trajectory is time consuming and maybe a priority for many of you right now, don't forget the importance of family in the long run. Striking a balance between work and your personal life will be the key to a life of time of happiness. The important factor here is to pick the right partner who supports you, who will stay by your side. Connect with people. Sure, you have tons of friends on Facebook. You are tweeting at this very moment, maybe. <laughs> but connection with real people in real time, as important today as they were in the ancient times. We are all social creatures, and your professional life and personal life will benefit from interacting with diverse group of people throughout your life. Stay humble. Whatever you become a doctor, a lawyer, a famous business executive, an entrepreneur, Remember, you are no better than anyone else. We are all part of the whole. Each person has a role to play, and we need each other. As my father's life demonstrated, we travel around the world, but the world does not revolve around us. See the glass half full, not half empty. Take my medical advice. Optimists are not only happier, they live longer. Surround yourself with positive people. It takes more energy to be bitter and angry 
than it does to be peaceful and optimistic. Give back. Offer your special skills to underserved individuals. My father spent thousands of hours and gave generously to needy. When I was in Seattle, I volunteered to do eye surgery in, in Mexico and El Salvador to give the gift of sight. You can also give back by becoming a mentor to young people. Finally, keep your life simple. One of the gifts of this time of frugality has been that we are forced to do without some things. Many people for the first time have realized how they can just as be as happy with less. As my father taught me when we left Afghanistan and started new in New York City, in the end, what matter most not things we possess, but the people you know and the education you receive. And above all, remember, the only thing that stays constant is change. Life is a stopwise process. We go up, we go down. You may start in the bottom, but your determination and knowledge and perseverance will get you where you want to be. Learn from your mistakes and don't rest on your successes. Always seek to be better. Just remember, with your education from this wonderful university, you will be fine. One day, you will undoubtedly may have an impact in the world and your community. Congratulations, class of 2012. Blessing to you and your families. Thank you.